Hi, uh, this, this video is about the ATM application, and so it's, I'm going to show you kind of show some, you know, just how to do the basic things, like you need to update the values in the database and get the values out of the database. So I haven't, I haven't done the complete project, but I will show you how to do those two crucial things, and then um, you should be able to figure out how to do the details yourself. Um, so let's look at the code. Um, so a lot of this is, is sort of like the sample code that was already on uh, Blackboard, but um, I'm doing some things here. So in the PowerPoint slides, they have some pre-built commands that they, they build using, you know, the GUI for Visual Studio in some way that we can't do because their example is from 2003 and the software has changed a lot since then. If you can get their approach to work, then that's fine, but um, if you can't, then I'm going to do something similar here. You can see that I'm making some some sort of pre-built commands of my own, and I'll show you how to use them. So I'm talking about these things up here. So I have some fields that are just a member of the ATM form class. One is a data provider factory, one is a database connection, and then I have three commands. You might want to make more commands if you, if you want, and if you want to email me and ask me to help you make some commands, then that's fine. Um, so one of them gets the uh, account account numbers, is that right? I for actually forget what that does. Um, but one of them, uh, anyway, so let's just wait until we get down to where these things are actually defined, and then I'll look at the command and tell you what they do. Um, so it, when the form is loaded, we initialize these global things. Um, so make sure you do initialize component first, because otherwise you could get some weird null pointer exceptions. Um, so make uh, df, remember df up here is a data provider factory, that is, you know, get factory, what is dp, dp is this string, and then I'm going to create a connection, cn is a db connection, this is the connection string, and now I open the connection. And in this part of the code, I'm getting the account number so that I can fill the combo box with them. You know, the combo box here on the form is supposed to display the account numbers for you. So that's what this is doing. So this is select account numbers. Okay, so that's, that's what this command is going to be doing. So you can see that the, the SQL command that it uses is select account numbers from accounts. And for me, the, the table that I have with all, all my information in it is called accounts. Yours might be called something different. And account numbers is just the key. Um, so account numbers is int, and um, yeah. So these are these are the account numbers for the people in the bank database. And then there's a using statement. After the SQL command gets executed, the results get put in this object called a data reader. And then you do while read. And here it says combo box one dot add items and so with this indexer you're getting you're getting the result from the database query you can use a, an integer like before in the sample code I was using zero that's because account numbers is the zero with column so zero and also using this kind of dictionary style account numbers as a string will work to get the information and you're gonna have to cast it uh, it comes back as an object so if you want to use it as an int you need to cast it as an int Okay, and that part's, that part's over, so that gets the strings for the combo box, and in this next part, we start building the command uh, for getting the value of a, of a particular account. So there's all this, you know, hollow blue kind of boilerplate stuff, and it's just like building the other command. So you, this is, what is this type? This type is a DB command. And you do database factory create command, and uh, make the connection your connection that you have a, uh, that it was defined previously. And here's the command text, which is really the important thing. So it says select balance amount from accounts where account account number equals, and this is just a parameter stand-in for something that I'm going to replace later. So I want this to work, you know, sort of no matter what the account number is. I don't want to have to rewrite this every time the account number changes. And then you do this prepare statement, whatever that does. And so this is another command for setting the account value. So this one is, is an update statement. 
So it says update accounts set balance amount equals new amount where account numbers equals account number. Um, and your, by the way, your database table doesn't have to be exactly like mine. And in fact, there are a couple things wrong with mine, like numbers. Why is it numbers instead of number? I don't know, because I was a moron. So you don't have to be dumb too. Um, <clears throat> so now let me let me show you some. Start with sort of the high level stuff. So I've written I've written just dummy code to test what I'm doing here. Can I select information from the database? Can I update information in the database? So I, I'm going to just do some things that proves that, that, the, that we have code that can do those two things. So I've written a command called, a, a, a method called retrieve account information. And um, so what does this do? This takes the select account value command, which remember is defined up here, and it replaces this, the account num, with whatever is, is in, selected in the combo box currently. And like this comment says, this is terrible style. There are actually built-in ways to fill in the values of these parameter things, <clears throat> which I'm not doing just because I was too lazy to figure out the syntax and I'm in kind of a hurry. But I will, I will try to do it before next week. Um, yeah, and so the disadvantage to doing it this stoop, this kind of dumb, um, just string, this is just a string and I do replace and I'm replacing this with the account number that I care about. The bad thing about about writing SQL uh, update code this way is that it leaves you vulnerable to what's called an SQL injection attack. And you can read the Wikipedia article on that and see what I'm talking about. So here when I'm retrieving the account information, so I'm going to get the account uh, value for this particular account number that's been selected in the combo box. Um, it's going to open the connection and then you have this using statement and you execute the statement and get this data reader and while you're reading, um, now this this is just debug, you know, to show that we got the correct value. So it says show the balance amount, and and that's it. So there should only be one result because account number is the key, and so there's only going to be one key that has account numbers equals account num. Um, so when I click on my balance button, it's first going to call that, and then it's going to update it, and then it's going to call this again. And what we're going to see is that the value in the database changed because of the account information call. So this tells you what it is originally, this will change it to something, and this will show you what it is then. And so we will have retrieved and updated information in the database. And this is the update account information. But just because I feel like I've been talking about abstract stuff too long, let's run the program. So I'm going to select an account number, account number 4. I'm going to press the balance button. This is not what the balance button is supposed to do. I'm just using it to test my code. So I click balance, and then there's this message box that shows the... This comes from the retrieve command, so this shows you the current value. So that's currently the amount of money that the client with account number 4 has in the bank. Okay, and this, this little bit of debug tells me that it's account number 4 that's selected. And this little bit of debug um, tells me what the update command is going to be after all those parameters are plugged in. So I'm plugging in 100 for the balance amount and 4 for the account number. And remember that this statement is kind of general, right? You have to plug in something for the new amount and something for the account number. So in my case, what I'm plugging in is balance amount 100 and account number equal 4. Okay, and so... Now what this is, this is the result of running the second retrieve account information command. And what it tells us is that the value of that uh, balance amount in the database has been updated. And so we have successfully read and updated the database. And since those are the basic things that you need to know to do the project, those, those should help. And um, email me if you have any more questions.